I want to address a major mistake I made that sparked a lot of questions and concerns. If you're curious to understand my perspective and what Christianity truly means to me, join me as I walk you through it step by step and answer the questions you've been asking. Let's go! So I'm here today to address some comments and feedback on a recent video that I linked below. I recognize there have been some misunderstandings, so I'm taking this opportunity to clarify them and respond to some of your comments from my perspective as a Seventh-day Adventist. Firstly, I want to sincerely apologize if my words cause confusion or concern, especially regarding the idea of Western values and the true meaning of Christ-centered community. When I speak of Christ society, I'm referring to the example set by Jesus and his disciples through their lives. They demonstrated love, service, and moral strength, grounded in God's law, not in the pagan influences of the Roman Empire, nor in the oppressive actions of institutions that contradict Christ's message through force or injustice. To me, the true Church of God isn't defined by buildings or titles, but by a community united in spirit, love, and the faithful following of God's law. As described in Revelation 14, 12, God's people are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The Ten Commandments, which form the moral heart of the Christian faith, guide us to love God and love our neighbors as taught to us by Jesus. These commandments are have no other gods before God. Do not make or worship idols. Do not misuse the name of God. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Honor your father and mother. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. And do not covet. These are not just rules to follow. They embody what I believe true morality is. So anyone who sincerely lives by these commandments, regardless of whether they identify as Christian or not, is part of God's people. Together, we form the true church in spirit, transcending institutions and human labels. It's also important to address the role of Christianity in history, especially considering the pain caused by institutionalized religion. I am fully aware that throughout history, Christianity has many times been used as a tool designed to serve humans' greed and thirst for power. That inevitably led to the harming of people and the values instilled by the Bible. Countless people have been hurt in the name of Christianity, and I do not condone or defend the injustices committed by institutions, mostly the Catholic Church, or any group that has abused Christ's teachings to their own benefit. Too many times Christianity has been misused for political power, oppression, and violence. Just look at what happens today with Trump. Trump famously held the Bible upside down after police cleared Lafayette Park during protests. Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. We have to bring back our religion. We have to bring back Christianity in this country. These wrongs cannot be ignored. So I want to make it clear that my alliance is to Jesus Christ and his teachings only, not to any institution or organization that contradicts his message. The essence of Christianity is about following the example of Christ, not perpetuating the mistakes of human institutions. My message is rooted in the teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist faith, which I believe aligns with the true path to salvation. I'm not promoting any church or earthly institution, but rather the core beliefs of Seventh-day Adventism. These beliefs are firmly grounded in the Bible and emphasize a commitment to God's law, salvation through Jesus Christ only, and living in harmony with God's will. I believe the Bible is our sole authority, sola scriptura, and that no human tradition, saints, or earthly powers can take the place of God's word. And this brings me to something I feel compelled to share with you as it relates to my mission for this channel. My aim is to guide people to a personal relationship with God, one that is firm firmly rooted in the teachings of the Bible. I'm not here to promote any institution, tradition, or human authority, but to point to Scripture as our guide. The Bible alone holds the key to salvation, and it is through its pages that we find truth, life, and guidance. 
significant part of my faith as a Seventh-day Adventist is understanding the prophetic messages found in the book of Daniel and Revelation. According to these prophecies, I believe that the true Antichrist power is pagan Rome, an empire that, in the name of Christianity, changed God's commandments, including altering the observance of the Sabbath. The Bible describes this entity as the beast. This is a crucial topic, especially as we look toward the future, as our history is moving closer to the fulfillment of these prophecies. There are clear signs of one prophecy in particular coming true in today's world. A troubling development that I believe will soon be in the spotlight is the combining of political and religious powers in the name of enforcing specific religious views. Specifically, with the recent election of Donald Trump and the rising discussion around Project 2025, we are facing a moment where the merging of religion and government could force people into conformity regardless of their beliefs. This is precisely how the Seventh-day Adventist interpretation of the end time unfolds. The uniting of American state power and pagan Rome, which is now Vatican, to form the beast power. Slowly but steadily, we see the world aligning with this prophetic scenario. And that's my motivation to keep working on this channel. Because I believe what God says is true. My purpose here is not just to share information, but to help you understand what the Bible says about the times we live in. I want to teach what God's Word reveals, especially about the end times and the prophecies that will soon unfold. So if you're interested in exploring these topics, this is the place to be. We will discuss these topics in depth, and I believe they will become increasingly significant as more people begin to realize the implications of what is happening in the world today. As we draw closer to these events, it's important to be equipped with the knowledge of God's Word and to understand the role we, as spiritual Christians, have to start playing right now. I will do my best to share with you what I believe is the truth about these matters so that we can stand firm in faith and live according to God's will. While my beliefs are firmly rooted in Christianity, I recognize the importance of respecting the beliefs of others. I don't intend to dismiss or devalue non-Christian cultures or religions. I believe people of all faiths or no faith can reflect God's spirit through acts of love, kindness and compassion. I also want to address something that has come up in the comment section. Some of you have noticed that comments sometimes disappear. I want to assure you that I never delete comments for disagreeing with with me or offering critique. Also, I never duplicate my comments or anything of that kind. However, due to issues of comments might be removed or hidden without my knowledge or control. And so, if your comment has disappeared, please know that it's not intentional on my part. So, I encourage you to save your comment and post it again if you feel it hasn't gone through. Please know that I value all perspectives and wish to engage with each of you as much as possible. That said, just as a side note, I do request that when you don't agree with me, you find it in your heart to be respectful and, if possible, constructive. Don't just dismiss what I'm saying. Please explain your views so I can understand you better. Finally, I want to reiterate that my sole guide in life is Jesus Christ. My values are shaped by Him and His teachings, not by any institution, political system or worldly ideology. My message has always been and will continue to be about following Christ's example. I encourage everyone to live by His principles. Love, kindness, and obedience to God's commandments. These principles are not just for church services, they are for daily life, in every interaction we have and in every choice we make. If I missed anything or if you have any further questions, I invite you to discuss them in the comments below. I'm always open to dialogue and I truly respect your perspectives. Subscribe and like this video if you want to find out more about our last moments in the world as we know it.